Hey everyone, Peachy Al here, and on today's episode, we gotta figure out why my bike didn't want to start in the morning. It now runs fine, but today in the morning, it did not want to start. So, let's do some diagnosing and let's figure out what's going on on today's episode of Pinche Al's Garage. So we have here a two, uh, 2022 Interceptor 650. Nothing's done to it yet. I'm um, getting ready to do some mods, but uh, today in the morning is around 32, 34 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty much at freezing temperature. I parked my bike in the garage, so it's not that temperature in the garage. However, it is freezing cold. Um, so today in the morning I started it up, and it started up kind of fine. It sounded like it was misfiring. It was going like, bop, 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 bop. You know, like a hard, rough start. And I thought to myself, what's going on with this thing? I need to figure out what's going on. So I let it run for a little bit. And then I turned it off and then I pushed it out. And then I didn't want to start it anymore after that. So I kind of started it up, held the throttle like about five, 10%. And then it started and it stayed on. But the moment I let go of the throttle, it turned off immediately. Uh, so to me, it could be a quite a few things. Number one, a relay, uh, the fuel, uh, either the fuel injector relay or the fuel pump relay is um, kind of like running, but not running. Maybe it's running on one cylinder in the morning with uh, on a cold start. Um, we just had the bike serviced at the dealership uh, for its 600 mile break-in service. The oil was changed, everything else was checked, everything else pretty much passed inspection, so there's nothing to worry about. I just came back from like a four or five mile ride and it was fine. It turned on fine, shut down off. I got it in first all the way through six gear. Everything was fine. I couldn't pinpoint what's actually wrong with the bike. So today we're gonna do an inspection on the relays. We're gonna pull the spark plugs out. We're gonna inspect the plugs, make sure everything's within specifications. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna see uh, and give you guys an update on that. So I'm gonna show you guys how to pull the plugs out of this bike uh, and we'll show you where all the relays are located. I did give you guys a breakdown previously on relay location and all that, but now we're gonna give you guys a breakdown on what they are and what they do. Okay, so the relays go pretty straightforward. The one that's up here on the top by itself is your flasher for your turn signals for left and right. That's what controls that. And then I found a really cool uh, image that gave me a quickly break breakdown. Um, this is the accessory relay, the fuel pump relay, the main ECU one, so the main relay for everything, and then the starter on the right. So accessory, fuel, main, and start. Um, more likely, this is the one that's giving me the issue. Is this one right here oh my god and this is why a lot of people give Royal Enfield grief you see this you see that it's soaked in grease it has so much grease in it even in the hole over here it's ridiculous I'm impressed that it actually starts from the factory You guys can see that right there. Right there, it's just, you see that all that white stuff? That's all grease. That's all just electronic grease. We need to get rid of all that on all the relays uh, just because it's, it's just too much. They should just have like a glob. Uh, what happens more likely when it gets cold, this stuff probably hardens just enough to prevent it from actually conducting so what we're going to do is we're going to stick it in, clean it off, stick it in, clean it off, stick it in, clean it off until we have like very, very minimal and more metal contact and less grease contact. So now I've been cleaning off the terminal. You guys can see that. No grease on the terminals at all. And all I'm going to do is stick it in the uh, cavity here and pretty much I kind of did this and repeated that process a couple times. 
And what I'm looking for is just a light coating of grease, like this. See that really light coating on there? That's all you need. You don't need it to be submerged in grease. That's probably why this bike had a hard start today in the morning. Um, I repeated that on this, on this one. And now I'm gonna start over here on this guy. Like, holy shnikes, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. If you guys wanna see, this is ridiculous. Come on, focus, look at this. This is ridiculous, you should not, you should not have grease protruding out of the freaking hole. This is stupid. Royal Enfield, I mean, I know you're trying to cover your butts and stuff, but holy crap, this is ridiculous. This is, I've never seen this much, uh, dielectric grease on terminals ever. It's a preventative maintenance uh, tool. I mean, it prevents rust and stuff, but it a little, I'm talking about a little bit goes a very, very long way. My only con reason why I think they did this is probably these terminals are notorious for rusting. They probably used cheap connectors Again, it's not the most expensive bike in the world. I'm telling you that right off the bat. And there's some corners that need to be cut. I understand. But holy smokes, that's like ridiculous. Very, very ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, it, it, again, more likely to save time during, during the, uh, repair, uh, the build process and whatnot. But come on. Come on. Add a little bit of love to your guys' product. Like I just inserted it and I took it back out. You guys will see once this gets in focus. Come on, focus. There you go. See, that's the right amount of grease. Just a little bit all around, nothing crazy. It doesn't need to be, again, doesn't need to be submerged in grease. It just needs to have some grease. Ridiculous. Again, the other, the first two I just did were look, were like this. Come on. Like this. This is ridiculous. This is not, this is not acceptable on any level. I couldn't ride my bike to work today because of this. I mean, I can't complain. I rode my scooter. I love my scooter, so I'm not going to complain about it, you know? But, you know, I like my Royal too. I'd like to put some miles on it. It's only got, what, 1,100 miles and I couldn't ride it? I mean, I would understand if I had like 10 or 15,000 miles. Okay, maybe there's, a, there's an issue now. But, come on, 1,100. 1,100 miles on my bike, and it wouldn't fire up in the morning. Because it was probably soaked in all this grease. Now I will confirm this problem tomorrow morning. If my bike turns right up and runs just fine tomorrow morning, because uh, tomorrow it's supposed to be about 34, 36 degrees in the morning, possibly colder, uh, and it starts up just fine. That's some BS, you know, I'm just gonna say that right now. Okay. That's all the relays. I'm gonna break them down to you one more time. Accessory, fuel, main, start, and then the one by itself up here are your turn signals. And your ECU sits up here. I mean, it's as basic as it gets for a freaking harness on anything in, in, in life. So, 
clean your terminals. Let's fire it up really quick and see uh, see if it turns on. Near the starter, good. And then it's a neutral, so it should fire right up. That's it. It runs. So that right there guys, I'm not guaranteeing you if this is the fix for it, but this is what I'm currently like questioning life about on this bike specifically. So tomorrow I will confirm and I'll post on the in the in the description, not description, in the comments if I fix the problem or not the next day. Again, it's gonna be super cold tomorrow. So I'm hoping that will give me a sign that if it fires up, then the problem solved. If it's the same exact issue, then it's definitely not a harness or a relay issue. There's probably something else going on over here in fuel injection uh, or in the spark plug department. Who knows? Uh, we'll figure it out as we go forward next uh, next diagnostic when this is cold because I just cold started it when I got home, fired up just fine. So that means it wasn't that the ambient temperature, because the ambient temperature here today was about 70 degrees in, in the afternoon and the morning was about 32, 34. I'm expecting the same temperature tomorrow. So if that temperature does and then it gives me the same exact issue or no issue, then the problem has been resolved due to the fact that I had too much dialectic grease on the relays. So hopefully that confirms it. Hopefully it does and then we figured it out. If it doesn't, then we'll diagnose some more uh, problems down the road. Thanks for tuning in on this episode of PTL's Garage. If you have any comments, please comment down below if you had the same issue or actually have a solution for this problem. Also, hit that like and subscribe button. Peace out, and you guys have a wonderful day.